been a hydrologist for, for over 20 years, but working in a power company as environmentalist. So in 2010, you started your PhD at UNESCO IHG. How did you decide to follow those studies? First and foremost, I saw it, I saw the advertisement on the website of UNESCO IHG. And because it said about Zambezi Basin, I was interested because my company works in the hydropower sector in the Zambezi Basin. So it was a power to flow project talking about how hydropower companies can give trade-offs to the environment and see how the environment can benefit. And have you been working, uh, doing your studies full-time at UNESCO IHG or have you been part here and part in your country? Yes, and that was uh, one of uh, my biggest uh, motivation. Working in a private company, um, it is very difficult to have a full-time uh, study leave for a full period of four years of uh, study. But this uh, program was a sandwich program, which gave me an opportunity to work half, half of my time in the Netherlands at UNESCO IHE and half of my time back in my country. And that motivated me because when I'm back in my country, I can do some work in my company and I can also look after my big family. That is really a big challenge also. I have seen that your PhD was part of a project, the Power for Float. Can you tell us about that? Yes, the Power to Float project is a very important uh, project. And um, it was initiated by um, uh, UNESCO IHE to look at hydropower dominated um, environments and catchments. And the Zambezi Basin was uh, chosen as one of them. The Zambezi Basin so far has four big uh, hydropower schemes and more potential to go on and some developments going on. So, the, the project basically is looking at how it can influence um, policy shifts in order for the hydropower operators to look after the environment much better. And of course, in which way will your research contribute to improve the regional situation? Which are your willings? My uh, research was focused in the middle Zambezi. And in the middle Zambezi, we found that because of the hydropower operations, flooding had stopped. And therefore, a, a particular tree called Fadebia albida had stopped to regenerate. And my research has found that the hydropower operators should do much more to facilitate some period of flooding in order to facilitate regeneration of this important tree, which is very important for the survival of the wildlife in the study area. You can you tell us where are you working now and which are your challenges that you have? I work for a power company, and it's a hydropower company, 99% uh, hydropower company, and I work in the environmental department, and um, we are tasked with looking at uh, uh, aspects that can make hydropower more sustainable. And uh, my research has helped me to be of greater help in order to make hydropower more sustainable. Um, do you have ambitions for the future? How do you see your career in the future and your job and work? I have uh, gained a lot of uh, knowledge during my research and I would like to pass on to the younger generation and where are these younger generation? It's in the universities. So my ambition would be to, to teach, even if it means part-time at a, a university. 
and pass on this knowledge to the younger generation so that in future, hydropower developers can do it much better. And I cannot close this interview in another way. Can you tell us something that you will never forget of UNESCO IHE? Oh, UNESCO IHE. It will always be part of uh, my life. I, one of the greatest things is about the simplicity of the Dutch people. The cycling. Every time I was in UNESCO IHG, I was much healthier because I would cycle. I would come to school cycling and um, by the time I go back, I'm missing the bicycles. And um, something about uh, professionally, just to mingle with all the water professionals, it is something that I'll never forget. Elenestina, my best wishes for your future career and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you.